Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, Prince Harry, our favorite ginger-haired royal rebel, decides he's had enough of California sunshine and avocado toast. He's suddenly hit with a wave of nostalgia for the good old days of stuffy castles and mandatory family gatherings. What does he do? He whips out his probably diamond-encrusted iPhone and fires off an email to dear old dad, King Charles, begging to join the family shindig at Balmoral. Now, let's pause for a moment and appreciate the sheer audacity of this move. This is the same Harry who's been airing the royal family's dirty laundry faster than a spin cycle on crack. He's been spilling more tea than the entire Boston Harbor, and now he wants to come back for a cozy family vacation. Oh honey, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. But wait, it gets better. Our spotlight-hungry prince doesn't just want to come back for a quick cuppa and a scone. Oh no, he wants to bring the whole circus with him. And by circus, I mean Megan and their Netflix crew. Because nothing says family bonding quite like a camera crew following your every move, right? Now King Charles, bless his royal heart, probably read this email and laughed so hard he nearly choked on his organic, hand-picked, royally approved breakfast crumpet. Can you imagine? The man's trying to run a monarchy, not a reality TV show. Let's be real for a second, folks. Harry and Meghan have been about as welcome in the royal family as a fox in a henhouse. They've been throwing more shade than an eclipse, and now they want to come back for a summer holiday. It's like setting fire to your neighbor's house and then asking if you can use their pool. The audacity is almost admirable. Almost. But here's the kicker, folks. Harry, in his infinite wisdom, thought this would be a great opportunity to heal some wounds. I'm sorry, what? You can't heal wounds with a Netflix special, Harry. This isn't some Hallmark movie where everyone hugs it out in the end and learns a valuable lesson about family. This is the British royal family we're talking about. They don't do public displays of emotion unless it's at a wedding or a funeral. And let's talk about the timing for a hot second. Harry sends this email right after he's been snubbed from the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. Talk about not reading the room. It's like he's playing the game of royal whack-a-mole, popping up whenever there's a chance for some attention. But King Charles, proving he's got more spine than we gave him credit for, shut that down faster than you can say God save the king. He basically told Harry to get lost, and honestly, good for him. It's about time someone put their foot down in this royal circus. Now, I can just imagine the scene at the Sussex household when that rejection email came through. Meghan probably spat out her organic fair trade ethically sourced coffee. Harry probably turned a shade of red that would make his hair jealous. And somewhere in the background, you just know their PR team was having a collective aneurysm. But here's the thing, folks. This isn't just about a family squabble anymore. This is about the future of the monarchy. Charles is trying to steer this ship through some seriously choppy waters, and he doesn't need Harry and Meghan rocking the boat every five minutes. Let's be honest, the royal family's got more issues than a newsstand right now. They're dealing with scandal after scandal, trying to stay relevant in a world that's increasingly questioning the need for a monarchy. The last thing they need is Harry and Meghan showing up with a camera crew, ready to turn Balmoral into the next big Netflix hit. And can we talk about Harry's so-called heartbreak for a second? He's devastated that he can't come to Balmoral. Please, this is the same guy who willingly walked away from his royal duties, moved halfway across the world, and has spent the last few years throwing his family under the bus at every opportunity. His heartbreak is about as genuine as a $3 bill. But you know what really gets me? The sheer hypocrisy of it all. Harry and Meghan left the royal family because they wanted privacy, right? They couldn't stand the constant media attention, the scrutiny, the lack of freedom. So what do they do? They move to Hollywood, sign deals with Netflix and Spotify, and do more interviews than a presidential candidate. Make it make sense, people. And now they want to come back to Balmoral, the one place where the royals can actually relax and be themselves, and turn it into a media circus. Oh, honey, no, that's not how this works. You can't have your royal cake and eat it too. But let's give credit where credit is due. 
King Charles handled this situation like a boss. He didn't mince words. He didn't leave any room for negotiation. He just laid down the law, royal style, and honestly, it's about time. The monarchy isn't a revolving door, Harry. You can't just waltz in and out whenever you feel like it. Now, I know some people might say Charles is being too harsh, but they're family. I hear you cry. Well, let me tell you something. Family or not, actions have consequences. Harry and Meghan have spent the last few years dragging the royal family's name through the mud. They've made accusations, spilled secrets, and generally behaved like rebellious teenagers rather than grown adults. And now they want to come back for a family holiday. Please, that's like expecting to be welcomed back to Thanksgiving dinner after you've spent the whole year batmuthing everyone on social media. It doesn't work that way in regular families, and it certainly doesn't work that way in the royal family. But here's the real tea, folks. This whole Balmoral drama is just the tip of the iceberg. We've got Harry's tell-all memoir coming up, which is probably going to make Fire and Fury look like a bedtime story. We've got Meghan's podcast, which is no doubt going to be chock full of thinly veiled digs at the royal family. And let's not forget the Netflix documentary that's probably going to make the crown look like a promotional video for the monarchy. The royal family is bracing for impact, and honestly, I don't blame them. They're trying to modernize the monarchy, to make it relevant for the 21 saint century. And every time they take a step forward, Harry and Meghan come along and drag them two steps back. But you know what? Maybe this is exactly what the monarchy needs. Maybe this constant drama, this airing of dirty laundry, is what will finally force them to evolve. Because let's face it, folks, the days of the stiff upper lip and never complain, never explain, are long gone. We're living in the age of transparency, of authenticity. And if the royal family can't adapt, they're going to go the way of the dodo. So in a way, maybe we should be thanking Harry and Meghan. They're forcing the royal family to confront some uncomfortable truths. They're making them face issues that have been swept under the royal rug for far too long. It's messy, it's uncomfortable, but maybe it's necessary. But that doesn't mean they get a free pass to Balmoral. No, sir. Actions have consequences, and it's high time Harry and Meghan faced theirs. They made their choice when they decided to step away from royal duties. They can't have it both ways. They can't be half in, half out. That's not how this works. So here we are, folks. Another day, another royal drama. Harry and Meghan are probably off licking their wounds in their Montecito mansion, plotting their next move. King Charles is probably enjoying a nice cup of tea at Balmoral, congratulating himself on finally growing a backbone. And the rest of us? We're just here for the show. Because let's be real, folks. This drama is better than any reality TV show. It's got everything. Family feuds, power struggles, scandals, secrets. It's like Game of Thrones, but with less dragons and more Corgus. So what's next in this royal saga? Will Harry and Meghan try to crash Balmoral anyway? Will they release a tell-all interview about how they've been excluded from family gatherings? Will Netflix somehow turn this whole mess into a multi-season series? Actually, that last one doesn't sound half bad. Netflix, call me. One thing's for sure, this story is far from over. The royal family is at a crossroads, and how they handle this situation could very well determine the future of the monarchy. Will they continue to close ranks and shut out Harry and Meghan? Or will they find a way to bring the prodigal prince back into the fold? Only time will tell, but one thing's for certain. We'll all be watching, because whether we like to admit it or not, we're all invested in this royal drama. It's like a car crash we can't look away from, a train wreck in slow motion. So grab your tea, settle in, and get ready for the next episode of The Real Housewives of Windsor, because this show, it's just getting started. And to Harry and Meghan, if you're listening, and let's face it, they probably are. Hey guys, here's some free advice. Sometimes, you've got to know when to fold them. You've played your hand, and it didn't work out. Maybe it's time to bow out gracefully, focus on your new life in California, and let the royal family be. Because this constant back and forth, it's not a good look. But who am I kidding? They're probably already planning their next media blitz. So buckle up, folks. 
The Royal Roller Coaster is just getting started, and it's going to be one hell of a ride. So stay tuned, my friends, because if there's one thing I've learned from watching the Royals, it's that the drama never stops, and neither do I. Until then, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.